One of the many advantages of using the Rock Science Suite is the interoperability between our programs. Users can access analysis tools in one program and easily import those results into another, allowing for a more comprehensive analysis of a model. In this tutorial, we'll specifically be looking at the integration between the FEM program RS3 with the 3D Slope Stability program Slide3. In this example, we'll be importing a Slide3 model into RS3 and using its advanced seepage analysis tools to create a surface representing the water table. After we calculate the results, we'll export this back into Slide 3 to perform a slope stability analysis. For this tutorial, we'll use a constructed Slide 3 model with dry slope conditions as a starting point. You can find a copy of this starting file in your RS3 tutorial folder, or you can download it from the link in the description below. We'll start the tutorial by importing the Slide 3 model into RS3. To do so, open up the RS3 program and select File, Import, Import Slide 3 Project, then select the Slide 3 model to import. On Import, deselect Generate Mesh and select Auto Restraints equal Rotation, then click OK. Next, go to the Mesh menu and select Mesh Settings. Select your element type as 4-noted tetrahedra and your preferred mesh type and element size. For this example, we'll use Uniform and set the element size to 25. Then click the Mesh button to mesh the model. Once it's done, click OK. Next, we'll go to the project settings to update our groundwater settings. You can access the project settings from the analysis menu or by clicking on the icon in the toolbar. Go to the groundwater tab and then select method equals steady state. You can then click OK to close the dialog. Next, we'll define our hydraulic properties. Go to the Groundwater menu and select Define Hydraulic Properties. This dialog is where we enter the hydraulic parameters for each material in the model. In this example, Joffrey, Whaleback, McRae, and B. George materials are already assigned the correct value. We will be changing the Dales and Sylvia materials to K equals 1E-06. Once you're done, click OK to close the dialog. Next, we'll define the groundwater boundary conditions by selecting the groundwater menu and choosing Define Groundwater Boundary Conditions. For this example, we'll assume we know the standing water level behind the pit crest. Name the new boundary condition RL460, where the type equals total head and the total head value is 460 meters. We'll now define a second boundary condition called unknown and select the type this time as unknown. Now that we've defined the boundary conditions, we can assign them. We'll start with the known boundary conditions. 
To make this easier, we're going to do a few things first. To begin, we'll decrease the transparency of the model using the slider in the Properties panel. Let's drag it back to zero to make the model opaque. Then we'll double click on the view in the top right of the screen so we can focus on just that. Finally, we'll turn off the visibility for the anisotropic surfaces by clicking on the eye icons in the visibility plane. Once this is all done, enable Faces Selection by clicking on the button in the toolbar. This will allow us to select the faces to assign the boundary conditions to. Next, rotate your model and proceed to select the faces of your model that known boundary conditions are going to be assigned to. Once the required faces are selected, go to the Groundwater menu and select Add Groundwater Boundary Conditions. We'll select the known RL460 and click OK to apply these settings to the model. To add additional control faces in your model, you may need to add additional surfaces in your model and divide all. You can do this by using the 3D Primitive Geometry and selecting Plane to add a new vertical plane immediately behind the pit crest. In this example, we'll be importing a plane parallel to the back surface of the model. To do that, select Geometry, Import Export, and select the file we provided for the vertical plane. You should now see the plane in the visibility pane. We'll then divide all. To do this, select Geometry, 3D Boolean, and then Divide All. It should be noted that if you redivide all, the mesh settings will be removed. So you'll need to remesh and add the restraints to the model per the user defined settings. You'll also need to reassign the boundary conditions like we did before. Once this is done, we'll select and hide the necessary volumes to access the faces inside the external boundary. You can do this by using the Entity Selection tool. Once the volumes are selected, use the visibility plane to make them invisible. Then add the additional known boundary conditions to the internal faces of the model. You'll need to turn the face selections back on to do this.
Finally, we're going to select all the other faces and assign the unknown boundary conditions. To make this faster, you can double click on the view window to bring back the other views of the model. Go to the top view window and use your mouse to drag and select all the faces. Then assign the unknown boundary conditions. Once you assign the boundary conditions to all the faces, select the Compute tab and then Compute Groundwater Only. The computation shouldn't take too long. Once completed, select the Results tab to view the results of the groundwater analysis. From here, there are multiple groundwater analysis results that can be exported from RS3 for use in the Slide 3 program. One option is to export the pressure head as an ISO surface. To do this, select ISO surfaces in the toolbar to add a new ISO surface. Change the data type to pressure head and the value to zero then uncheck Use Legend so you can change the color to blue. Then click OK. If you want to view the ISO surface in RS3, just go to the legend and select Pressure Head so it'll load. To export the ISO surface, we'll select it in the Visibility tree, and then select Geometry, Import Export, Export Geometry. Save this surface as an RS Geometry object. This file is what we're going to import into slide 3. Now open slide 3 in the original slide 3 model file that we've been working with. From here, we're going to import the ISO surface. To do this, select Geometry, Import Export, Import Geometry, and select the RS Geometry file we exported from RS3. We'll then use this ISO surface for our water surface. Select the imported surface in the Visibility tree, and then select Groundwater, Add Water Surface, and assign the ISO surface as the water table. If you want to view and analyze 2D sections of this model and the imported water surface, you can go to the View menu and use the Section Cut tool. Just use the slider or drag the plane to see different sections of the model. This process can be repeated as often as necessary. You can go back to RS3 and modify the ISO surface as required by adding, removing additional boundary conditions to the model, recomputing, and exporting the ISO surface so you can compare the results. As you import your different water surfaces, you can then perform slope stability analyses, and this will give you a more comprehensive idea of your factor of safety. Another type of useful groundwater data you can export from RS3 is pore water pressure. If you go back to the RS3 model, we can easily export this data by going to the File menu, Export, 
and selecting Export Pour Water Pressure. Save the file and head over back to the Slide 3 program. Now go to the Groundwater menu and select Add Water Pressure Grid. This will open the dialog where we can import the RS3 data. Click Import and select the file, then click OK. In the Properties pane, we can adjust how we view the water pressure grid. Using the View options, you can change the contour colors, as well as the point size. We'll change the point size here to 10 to make the points easier to see and analyze. Thanks for following along with this tutorial on RS3 and Slide 3. We hope you learned some useful skills on making the most of both of these dynamic rock science programs.